Simple Speed Secrets Simple Speed Training Secrets to increase running speed and transform your body. Narrated by John Hawks Introduction Hello and welcome to our short beginner's guide on increasing your running speed and also transforming your body with sprint training. Sprinting is an excellent form of exercise. Whether you are actively training for competitions, playing competitive or social sports, or simply using it as a part of your cardiovascular routine. To begin this guide, we're going to spend a few moments discussing what sprinting is and isn't, and also take a look at the history of sprinting. What is sprinting? Sprinting is defined as a competitive running event that is 400 meters or less. Most sprinting events are 100, 200, or 400 meters. Most of them last less than 60 seconds, because sprinters are running as fast as they can during the entire length of the race. Some sprinting competitions include relay races that involve four runners, each sprinting a certain distance. Sprint in a training sense can also mean doing a particular cardio exercise with all-out intense anaerobic effort for a brief period followed by rest. Sprinting versus Running Although sprinting and running use the same muscle groups and are essentially the same thing, there are some key differences. Sprinting, as mentioned before, involves athletes moving as fast as they can for the whole sprint in an anaerobic environment, making it much more intense than running. From a metabolic standpoint, that means you are using glycogen rather than oxygen for your muscles, which wears you out a lot faster than a well-paced run. Running, on the other hand, is slower and less intense than sprinting, so events are much longer and require aerobic fitness. Running competitions include the 5K, 3.1 miles, the 10K, 6.2 miles, half marathons, 13.1 miles, and full marathons, 26.2 miles. Running uses oxygen to keep you going, so you can maintain your pace for longer, which is why you have to run for at least 10 minutes for it to be considered exercise. Origin of Sprinting Sprinting dates back farther than any other competitive sport. In fact, it was the first type of athletic competition that was ever recorded. The earliest record came from the original Olympic Games in 776 before Christ. Some experts believe that sprinting may have been the only competition at the very first Olympics. At that time, that race was one state in length, which is about 200 meters. Modern Olympics When the modern Olympics were created in 1896, they included two sprinting events. 1,000 meters and 400 meters. Then, in the 1900, the 200 meter dash was added. Relay races were included starting in 1912 with a 4x100 race and the 4x400 race. At that time, only men were allowed to compete in the Olympics, but when women were included in 1928, sprinting events were on the list. Benefits of Sprinting There are many benefits to sprinting. It can increase your maximum heart rate and capacity to exercise. Sprinting also burns a large amount of calories in a short amount of time and can boost your metabolism, making it a great way to lose weight and transform your body composition without needing to spend hours on a treadmill. Some people use sprinting as a part of a weight training program because it uses a big group of muscles all at once and helps to strengthen them. Well, that's a brief intro into sprinting training and what we'll be covering in this guide. In the following chapters, we're going to focus in on the different aspects of sprinting and help you develop a plan to get the most out of every sprint session. Are you ready to begin? Let's dive in.